Hey there, it is Tom Stryker on behalf of Indie Structural Productions once again, and now we're in for a little bit of a different kind of build this time around. I got contacted about, God, it's many months ago, moons ago now, uh, about making a guitar body for a ready-made neck. So I thought it would actually be a very interesting video to show you what are the steps for making a guitar body fit a ready-made neck. I haven't gotten too far ahead into this project yet, but essentially I have very, very roughly just cut up a slab of ash, um, two pieces ready to go for some further shaping. And this is where we're gonna pick things up from. So it's essentially just gonna be an ash body, bolt on neck, should be good fun. This is gonna be about seven eighth size, I believe. So a little bit smaller of a size. I guess essentially the first place to start for this would be kind of laying everything out, making sure that you're getting everything in the right, correct positions. All right, so what we have here, just so I can get everything copied out onto, well, paper. I have some tracing paper here and I'm using just a pencil to kind of get the edge worked out. Could use it like this too. There. I guess I didn't need the better pencil now. Now already at this point, a very good rule of thumb is to have center lines drawn for everything. So we're also going to do that for this piece. It's not too much of a straight line here. So fortunately I have a good protractor to keep my line straight. There we are. All right, now we're gonna apply this to the body. So essentially we have the center line on the body blank and now we have put the drawn bit that we just did in the right place. Now I'm gonna check that this actually is a 25 and a half inch scale length. Um, all right, let's take from the nut metric. So that would be first fit is 36, 3, 5. Yeah, let's check the 12, which would be 3, 2, 3, 8, 5. 3, 2, 3. Yeah, that looks about right. Okay, so it is a 25 and a half inch scale length. That would mean that our scale length would hit, scale length would be there. Center line for two hole. Oh yeah, I need to do this. So a very good protractor goes a long way for any and every possible use in guitar building. So that is where the bridge is gonna sit, essentially. It's gonna be something like that. And I got the pickups, but they're, of course, standard sizes for everything. So I need to have a little bit of space in between the pickups there. How much space? Because I usually want to have about 11 mil off from the saddles. So, what, five? Five mil. Let's see how that looks. So, bridge humbucker. Now, because of the neck having such a flat back, it's a very squared off back, I'm just gonna have that go into the first uh, pick up pocket and have the single coil pretty much at the very, very base of the neck. What I do need to do is transfer that shape into the wood. All right, let's keep 
figuring out where everything goes. All right, so now we have everything kind of planned out. Back cavity as well, front cavity. The way I got those to match up and line up is just drawing on the front with the center line and scale length, then bring the scale length around to the back and get the back position that way as well. Of course, the ferrules aren't gonna be this large as they are here. I drew, I drew them at 15 mil just to kind of guide myself into not cutting off too much material and giving myself a little bit of leeway. And because it is a bontard neck, it's very easy for me to just rather remove material than try and add more. So I'm gonna cut this really wide and then see how the neck fits and then fine adjust from there, which is usually a very good way to go, especially when doing this sort of stuff. It's very easy for you to kind of figure out how much to take away once you have a rough neck pocket that the neck fits in and fits snugly, then you can start taking away uh, all the stuff that's kind of poking out, as it were. Gonna go from there. Off to the workshop, I guess. doing this before, actually. Try to get anything out. Triton with a three flute bearing cutter from Radiant Tools. Should make pretty quick work of this. That's a very nice clean cut. done the neck in the middle and there's not really much else to it. Pretty straightforward stuff. Template on with blue and masking tape and, and uh, yeah I do need to make sure that I don't cut into the body though. So just adjust the depth of the cut here. That would be fine.
All right, let's have fun. Sort of this weird. <coughs> cool job. All right, let's see if that worked. It did. Awesome. That is my line to follow now. Let's just draw it a bit better. So that is the shape. And I think we could technically keep, keep that shape. That's not too bad. Prepare to make a lot of dust real quick. And uh, let's get that nice shape. Bindle fan. Now just to get rid of those final pesky fan saw marks for the cutaways. It's about right for most of it. Quick change over. Sorry I didn't film this, but what I've done is I know my control layout from the top and what I want it to be. Now to transfer that to the back, I'll drill all the way through so that I can mark out where I'm gonna do my back cavity because this is not gonna have a pick guard like a normal strap. So first of all, let's get, this is the minimum distance from the edge. Not really wanting to go any less than that. Now that should be pretty good. Let's see how that looks. It looks fairly good. I think that has enough space for the volume pot. And that should have enough space there for the switch. No, it's not going into any pockets or anything like that. I think that should be pretty good. Fairly tight squeeze for everything. And then we're just gonna have the jack inset anyway. So that's not a big deal. Yeah, I think that looks good. Good today. Severe learning. We'll see how this goes. Next up, a lot of sanding and then some roundovers. Once again, really wishing that there were more instruction here, but gotta work with what we got. All right, 120. Front, back, and then 
Carlos. Good old Toasty. Shinto Sora. We're gonna try it on top. All right, so since you've last seen this body, um, I first sanded down all the edges, so to get rid of all that, you know, all the burn marks left over from uh, dull router bed. But I have also finished all the hole drilling, so the pins for the bridge, the wire access through all the pickup cavities, I have the switch in its place, and yeah, oh, and the jack socket. So I've done all those, then I sanded everything down, and then I wet the grain. Now, what that essentially means is exactly what it sounds like. So I took some, just some regular water, I had a little spritz bottle, and I wet the entire guitar um, just to give it, not, not like completely dunked it in water, but just a little bit of water on top of the entire guitar, and that basically lifts up the little bit of grain uh, in the wood that I'm now gonna sand back. Now, usually I repeat this process like a few times up until the grain doesn't really raise that much anymore, and then I move on to finishing. That just gives the finish a much, well, a much smoother end result. So that's what I intend on doing with this as well. Um, seeing as we're gonna be doing a couple of layers of stain, and the stain itself might bring up the grain a little bit more, so that helps with the entire process. So now, just looking over, raised pretty much everywhere, and this is a very good point as well, where raising the grain with some water, you will also start to see if there are any scratches in the wood that you need to kind of take care of. And the looks of it, there's a, nope, that's just grain. Um, a little bit of scratches here, those are very easy to get rid of now when I start sanding this back. But other than that, it looks pretty good. I'm gonna sand it back, uh, probably just 320, and then wet it again and see how it looks after that. Pretty soon we'll get to staining. Fun times. All right, so there we have it. Just need to do a quick little test to make sure everything works. Oh, would help if I was plugged into the input. So that 
that's the bridge, which is, well, I'll put all the pickups here somewhere for you to check out. So bridge, uh, hold on, yeah, it's a five way. Then the second position, so that will be these two pickups. Then the middle position. Fourth position. And neck. Strings are still stretching quite a bit, so. Let's have a look here. Really like the middle position, it sounds great. A uh, little bit of distortion. Bridge. Me and Awami Bar just don't really mix well together, but yeah, hey, there we go, there we have it. The demo portion of this really had nothing to do with the actual video, so it was just me testing the pickups. <clears throat> testing the electronics, I'd say. Now, that was how to build a custom strat body, or basically just make a custom body for a ready-made neck. Now, I did setups and everything else uh, as much as I could with the neck that it has. Could still do with a tune-up on the frets and stuff like that, but that is future stuff to do. All in all, I think this project went very well. Now, I'm not one, and I've never been one to kind of shy away from mistakes made because mistakes and failures are the things that help us improve into becoming better makers, better luthiers, and things to learn from. Now, for me, that meant that previously, as you might see, I'm wearing a very different shirt than the very last time lapse that you saw right there. Um, during the intonation process, I realized that this template that I used for routing the bridge cavities, it has a line here going through the middle of the bridge. This is not the scale length. And I did not know this. I thought that it was the scale length because I had just, just uh, gotten used to that fact on the Evertune route that I did. However, I got everything fixed up. It just meant some of the plugging on the holes, fortunately had more of the ash that this body was made from, so it was a fairly easy process to fix it. I'll show you some close-ups of what that meant. But initially I had to move the bridge back half an inch, which, which was a terrible thing for me to come to realize at the very tail end of putting this thing together. However, I informed the customer about this immediately and we talked it through and he's completely fine with me being honest about this. And I, well, if you are a guitar builder and you make stuff for customers, there's no, no reason that you should be, no matter what mistakes you made, the best thing you can do is be straightforward and honest, explain exactly what happened. And you'd be surprised at how many times the customer will understand your point of view and your perspective. Offering a discount or offering 
to do something extra is always a plus, but do not pretend like everything is fine when something really isn't. That only causes more issues down the line. I'm gonna give this one more quick look over, then it's into the case, packaged up nicely, protected, and shipping off to Greece to the customer. Uh, I hope you have enjoyed this video. It was a little bit different format-wise, but I think very, I hope, a very informative video. If there's something that I might have missed here, please do let me know in the comments below. I will try to address it in future videos. However, click like, subscribe, smash that bell. It does help out a hell of a lot, and I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you for watching.